Hello YouTube people, today I'm gonna show you this crazy watch Casio G-Shox GBD100 and people have very polarizing opinion about this watch they either love it or hate it there is almost no middle ground so why this watch provokes such a strong opinion? Uh, let me try to explain you see, people are emotionally invested in some brands like for example, there is your favorite football team or basketball team, doesn't matter. And for example, they lose the match, okay? You feel upset. It's still your favorite team, you wish all the best for them and they lost. But that doesn't change the fact that they are still your favorite team. The same thing with Casios and G-Shocks. There are fanboys like me, for example. And when we see the quality going down and prices going up, that makes us upset. And that's why these fights happen. Some people say, oh, it's bad, it's it, it's very bad watch, this and, and that is bad about the watch. And other people say, no, it's still good, it's it's very good, it's still, it's, it's fine, it's still good watch, it's wonderful watch, what are you talking about, that's nonsense. And see, that's why this polarization happens, because people are emotionally invested, they care. You know, usually, like for example, if there is no, some kind of watch, doesn't matter, not a very popular one. There are people who like the watch and there are people who don't care about the watch. There aren't people who hate the watch because people are not emotionally invested. So there are no, no one who hates the watch. They just ignore the fact of such thing even existing. So that's it, e even lying, okay? But when there are things like this where people are emotionally invested, in the brand, in the G-Shocks, they only wish the best thing for them. That's when things happen, when these waves happen, these fights between people saying it's a good thing and people saying it's a bad thing. So this watch has uh, a lot of uh, objective reasons, uh, objective positives and objective negatives. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm not gonna go into details, I'm not gonna show you how to use these stupid menus and stupid functions, that's not about that. We're gonna talk about quality and overall positives and negatives. Okay, so do I like this watch after wearing for several days? What's my opinion? How is, it, how is the watch? How it feels? Uh, you see, I kinda like it. I kinda like it, but there are things that really annoy me, really annoy me and upset me really. So. We're gonna talk about those. So what are the first things that are objective and negative that you're gonna notice? This is the first G-Shock that they have with a plastic buckle. This is a huge surprise to me. A G-Shock, a watch that's suppo supposed to be very strong and durable, has a plastic buckle? That's very, very questionable. And another thing, it is very loose very loose the build quality is just not good whatsoever and that's why it makes a lot of noise and when i take the watch like this off the hand try to set something in the menus or something it always makes this like i just can't stand it it's so annoying so every time i take the watch in the hands to set something i always hold with one hand the buckle so it wouldn't make the noise because that is so annoying and another thing this buckle was not finished like something like Pagani design makes wonderful clasps but edges are sharp and you have to finish the watch uh, and soften out these edges the same thing goes with this G-Shock I mean this buckle is like pressed plastic right and in some places there are very sharp edges and you see this is very very sensitive skin and I just couldn't wear this watch for longer than 10 minutes. It was scratching my hand. So what I had to do is to take a na nail filler and soften off the buckle, soften off the edges. I mean, that shouldn't be happening with a G-Shock. Uh, when I buy a G-Shock, I kind of expect some kind of a premium product. <laughs> Sorry, but this is, this is far from premium. This is one of the worst buckles I have ever seen. So that's disappointing. Another objective negative thing that you're gonna notice straight away is um, how plasticky the watch is. I mean, I expect only soft rubber on a G-Shock because it's supposed to be durable, right? But the thing is that, for example, 
these edges, they are hard plastic on a G-Shock, hard plastic on a G-Shock, and these sides, these red parts, on this side, and on this side. This is hard plastic, and when you take it into hands, it feels like some kind of a toy from a Kinder Surprise. I mean, this is a proper G-Shock. I can smash it into a wall and it wouldn't care. Like, pff, yeah, whatever, it's gonna fly away. <laughs> and I'm 100% sure that watch just doesn't care. While this watch right now, what has just happened? What has just happened? Please don't do this to me. And that's how it feels like. It doesn't feel like a proper G-Shock. It feels like if I would gonna throw it into a wall, it's gonna break like from the first try and that just doesn't feel right, doesn't feel G-Shocky and when I put it on the hand there are these squeaky noises and when I wanna adjust uh, the watch on my wrist and it's like does it sound like a G-Shock to you? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Speaking about materials, I'm I'm disappointed. You see, this is a proper G-Shock. It doesn't care. I did a durability testing of 5600 BB. Uh, the link is in the description if you want to check it out. And I'm wow. This watch is just I can smash it. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I I, I I trust this watch. The trust factor. The trust factor of a G-Shock is just incredible with these square G-Shocks. I couldn't say about this one. I don't have that feeling. And that's a very big issue for me, very big problem. Okay, another objective negative thing that you're gonna notice straight away is how slow the menu is. <laughs> like, it's horrible. I mean, if I take something like, where is it? A Mass Fit Neo, right? Smart fitness watch. This is also supposed to be a fitness watch, kind of smart. And I also have another Xiaomi Band 5, something like that. My wife currently wears that watch. She loves that watch. Wonderful watch. And the thing is, I'm a geeky person. I like going to menus without any kind of instructions and fig figuring, figuring it out all by myself. I feel pl pleasure from that. And it was very enjoyable doing that with this watch. Uh, with the watch, with its app on the phone, also that Xiaomi Band 5 also was wonderful, figuring it all out was very interesting. This, however, it got on my nerves, I mean seriously, it got me anxious, that the menu itself is so slow, I mean, for example, if I go into a running function, okay, let's start this running menu. Okay, let's start the stopwatch. Let's start the stopwatch, yeah, whatever, do something. Stop the stopwatch. You see, that's another problem. Another problem. I mean, proper fitness watch has to have a very good, reliable stopwatch. And for that, you also need very good, reliable button, which you could reliably press very quickly and won't lose split seconds while doing that. While with these stupid G-Shock squishy buttons, you, <laughs> you aren't only losing milliseconds, you also aren't pressing the button sometimes, like, you need to really press it, like, and just, sometimes it just doesn't happen, you know, that was unintentional, and sometimes I just miss it, I just don't press it enough, and that just gets on my nerves, things like that, oh my god. Okay, so, I stop the stopwatch, I hear the menu jumps, jumps out okay i don't care i want to delete delete okay the delete delete the previous whatever memory of using stopwatch split timer lap timer whatever that is it doesn't matter of uh, you saw how long it takes you know what happens when you want to just go through the menus do something and you kind of unintentionally press this button you have to wait every time that's just and the menu itself, look, the menu itself, I go through the menu. Look, I will, 
I'll show you the proper speed of, of the menu, like... This is a proper speed, this is... Actually, this is a proper fitness watch. When I do fitness, <laughs> that's what I use, this is my fitness watch. All I need is a stopwatch, that's it, not this magic menu, sub-menu, timer over timer and... Who designed this? <laughs> this makes me mad. You know why it makes me mad as well? That it doesn't have a proper stopwatch, really. All I need from a fitness watch, just a stop stopwatch. And trust me, I was back in the day, <laughs> a few years back, I was very, very passionate about fitness. I was like, I was not eating enough <laughs> and training too much. And I was very skinny, but I mean, I was skinny and ripped to the point where you could see individual deltoids on my shoulders. Like, I was like mini version of Arnold. <laughs> so basically Arnold without steroids, right? So I kind of know one or two things about fitness. And I can tell you one thing. <laughs> This is not a fitness watch. This is a fashion watch, not a fitness watch. It's not convenient enough for fitness. And these buttons are just... I don't see myself using this watch in a fitness. If, if you ask me how this watch could be used in a fitness, I don't know. Throw it in a wall, catch it, throw it in a wall, catch it, I don't know, wrap it up, use it like a tennis ball. I mean, it's a G-Shock after all, right? But using these functions for some kind of fitness, I just... You have to have so much patience and like you're probably gonna use it for a week and then forget about those functions anyway because they are just inconvenient, annoying and there are essential things that this watch misses as a fitness watch. Good button, good stopwatch button and good stopwatch. Look, I'll show you the stopwatch of this watch. This is stopwatch, okay? I'll start the stopwatch and you tell me the problem. What is the problem with this stopwatch? Why it cannot be used as a fitness stopwatch? Tell me the problem. Do you say something is missing? I mean, where is split seconds? Where are my split seconds? I mean, it's all about split seconds. It's, it's the difference between winning and losing. Those split seconds. And all this watch shows you seconds. <laughs> Seconds like what's my finishing time 30 seconds 30 seconds and it doesn't show just 30 seconds <laughs> What? <laughs> and another stupid thing from a fitness point of view it has this stupid timer function where you can set multiple timers in a row and you can set the times how many times they're gonna repeat uh, after another so you can set like for example you run for three minutes then you rest for one minute then you run for five minutes then you rest for two minutes you can set it all on on this watch and it like two minutes it beeps and vibrates three minutes it beeps and vibrates and you kind of supposed to train by this split time which is completely stupid that's the way how you're gonna break yourself you see there is reason why people use stopwatch as a reference of how long you have to rest after some kind of fitness activity like it it's all days are different you feel different each day and for example you do some running for three minutes and you just imagine that you roughly have to rest for two minutes so you start the stopwatch just as a reference and if you feel good, it's, if, if it's a good day, you're gonna rest enough in one minute and a half and you're gonna proceed to the next thing. But on bad days, you know, some days may be good, some days may be shit. So some days maybe, you, okay, you estimate you need two minutes. Two minutes have passed and you still feel shitty, like it, it just doesn't go that day. So what you do, you wait an extra minute, something like that. You don't break yourself. And on some shitty days, you feel like, oh, I have a headache, I feel weak, I feel bad. You know what you do? You take a day off. And that's a very smart decision to do, speaking from a fitness standpoint. You are not a robot. You can't train with these stupid intervals, like three minutes this, two minutes that. You are going to break yourself. You know why? Because you're going to overreach your 
tre threshold of a, uh, of a training day. If you're gonna exceed that, you aren't gonna rest enough till the next training session. And you know what? You're gonna do the same stupid thing on the next training session. You, 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 you set yourself, okay, you're gonna rest two minutes. And you know what? You haven't rested yet from the past training session. So not only two minutes is not enough. You are still kind of tired from the previous session. And this accumulates throughout training sessions. And all, all you do is just breaking yourself. I mean, it's kind of fine if you're under 25 or use some kind of special juice. But as a normal human being, you know, you have to feel yourself. You know what? If you want to step up to this uh, level of proper fitness, you have to use something like Polaris H10 proper uh, belt on your chest and measure your heart rate and you just st uh, start your stopwatch uh, for for example you want to rest till the next exercise you uh, first of all you check your heart rate your zone of your heart rate your goal is to rest down till the lower heart rate or something like that and only then you s you look at the stopwatch how long it, how long it took to get down there you know it's not like oh two minutes past i go no your heart rate goes down to that uh, zone and only then you go and the same thing when you do uh, for example some kind of running you, there is a task you have to stay in certain heart rate regime and, and if, if things just doesn't go right if your heart goes just too crazy you either slow down or stop completely it's like you have to be smart about that. You see, when I was younger, I used to push myself like crazy. But the thing is, with age, priorities changes. And like, right now, I care more about my health, about my joints, more about the size of my biceps. You know, things change. Okay, if you're young, but I'm telling you from experience, I saw so many people breaking themselves. And see so many YouTube gurus of fitness who use as juice and they just completely lost the sense of real world, how a human body, natural human body works. I mean, don't use this for fitness, you're gonna break yourself. Okay, this is not about fitness, it's about the watch, but this is stupid. Okay, sorry, I, I, I let myself loose a little bit. <sighs> uh, you see, if you find these functions useful for you, I'm happy for you, good for you, great. But what I want to say that from fitness standpoint, I just don't see these functions useful. And this watch is marketed as fitness watch. So that's why I went off and told my opinion about it. That's my opinion, but it's kind of a little bit objective as well. Let's talk a little bit about this G-Shock app. So the watch connects to the, to the phone and always shows incredibly accurate time, <laughs> the same time as on the phone, right? But the problem is that this app always stays on right there in the corner. And the thing is throughout the day I open and use multiple apps and sometimes I go and close them all off like press X and that's it, all apps are closed. And what happens? Then the watch loses the connection to the phone. I mean, this is some kind of connection where it always has to be open. The app has to always stay open in the background with all other apps. You watch YouTube, you scroll through the internet. Okay, you want to close everything up and you close this app together with all those and that's it. The watch loses the connection. I don't think it's supposed to be that way. It kind of feels a little bit like ancient technology. Overall, the, the slowness, the lack of functionality, the, this app, it feels like 10 years back, this technology, in comparison to MS Fit Neo, to Xiaomi Band 5, and things like that. This is ancient technology. It, that, that's how it feels, and I, I put it into objective negative things. Completely subjective is the size. My wrist size is 16.5 centimeters, and this watch, when I tighten it up, like, properly, it fits, it sits in place. There is still too much space on the side. I can almost turn the watch around my wrist. Like, yeah. So I would say you need at least 17 centimeters wrist to really fit the watch. Another subjective thing. 
is the price. That's completely my opinion. But I don't think that this watch at 140 euros is priced correctly. I mean, first of all, it doesn't really feel as a true G-Shock. It doesn't feel durable. Functionality is like 10 years behind. And the, the quality is just also doesn't feel like a G-Shock. And the competition, the competition is insane, especially speaking about fitness watches. This MS Fit is a wonderful watch. I highly recommend it. And it costs something like between 20 and 30 euros. That's ridiculous. And it even measures heart rate. It measures heart rate up to 120 beeps. And above that, it just completely loses. But about that, sometime in the future when I'm going to do a review about this. Also, uh, Xiaomi Band 5 that my wife currently wears. Also, it costs 40 euros. And it's just great smart watch. Really great smart watch. And the battery lasts 8 days as minimum wonderful watch and this one a hundred and forty euros it just doesn't seem reasonable you see my problem is that g-shock is becoming too much of a fashion watch where you just pay for the brand pay for the fashion instead of functionality and durability and something like that that's my point of view that's subjective opinion okay 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 it's not all bad there are many objective and subjective good things about this watch as well it's not all bad so objective positive thing uh first thing which that you're gonna notice this strap is wonderful wonderful strap in the previous video about some casio watch i mentioned that casio makes too big of a gap between holes and i sometimes i need to puncture an extra hole to find my perfect fit and as an example i showed you a mass fit neo because it has a lot of holes close to each other so you're always gonna find your perfect fit so casio is moving up and look what we have a lot of holes close to each other very good very good strap and this thing i don't know how is it called holster or something it has little pin inside you see and then you put this side of a strap in it locks in place very very securely it even is difficult sometimes to remove it it's it's very good feels very good on your hand positive objective thing you see the way it is built with these little wings inside it forms this very nice oval shape and even this watch is physically too big for me for my 16.5 centimeter wrist it still feels comfortable this watch feels comfortable so if you have slightly bigger wrists it's gonna feel great on your hand feels very good and speaking about the functions it's not all bad you see it has multiple main screens it has this step counter which is well kind of interesting you know have this step counter on the watch not necessary but something and this i don't know it's supposed to connect to your phone to measure the distance you walk and run but some for some reason doesn't work on my phone and another screen is dual time zone which is wonderful it's very convenient look how easy it is to see i set the uptime as sydney <laughs> australia sydney you know why it's just uh, if i point my finger straight down throughout the earth there is Australia on the other end of the earth where Jody from Just One More Watch lives. <laughs> so I set the watch secondary time of his town. So I kind of know when to expect his new videos. <laughs> so jo Jody, best wishes to you, man. I, I don't know. I, I think those big YouTubers don't really watch me. But yeah, speaking about Jody, only good things I could tell about him. And this is this time and this is my time another positive thing well i previously had a square g-shock with bluetooth function which was b5600 i don't quite remember the one with blue ring around the screen and the problem with that watch was that it was very difficult to set the watch on the watch uh, for example the time for how long the backlight uh, works and all these things it was very difficult but it was very easy to set that watch from the phone app so this one is completely opposite this phone app is kind of stupid it loses connection for me and i just don't like it but if i hold the adjust button on this watch 
It has perfect submenus on the watch itself. It is very convenient. It has everything, light function and all everything you need. So you don't need to hack this watch like hold this button for this amount of time to access this submenu and no it's very simple like this proper menu that's very good another subjective positive thing about the watch i personally would like to say is that uh, when i wear something with long sleeves i either wear something small that would get under a sleeve and wouldn't catch would feel comfortable or i wear something big that doesn't get under the sleeve whatsoever and that's a very positive thing because the watch always stays on and it doesn't get under the sleeves under the sleeve so every time i check the watch oh here's the watch i don't need to use my second hand to uncover the watch so sometimes that's what i want the looks the looks of the watch the design i personally like it okay i know people look at this watch and like foo it's like it look, looks like a toy. My wife saw this watch and she was like, "Oh, fooey. <laughs> and for example, uh, I wouldn't imagine my father-in-law wearing this watch. Uh, you know, <laughs> imagine the situation. He wears this watch. He goes meets his friends. His friends would make fun of him. They would be like, "Oh, where did you get this watch? Stole it from a kid?" And he would probably reply something like, "No, my my daughter found it in a Kinder surprise." You see, <laughs> you see the stone. So it's kind of watch for younger audience, I would say. It, uh, it, it's up to you. You can wear whatever you want. You can be naked. I don't care. But in my opinion, this is a little bit towards younger audience. And there's a little bit of a problem with that. Younger audience usually has smaller wrists. And this watch fits only 17 plus centimeter wrists. So it kind of misses the point a little bit with the size. Oh, I almost forgot. The main selling point of the watch, the thing what sells this watch, the screen, the screen of the watch. And how is it? How is it in the real world after several days in, 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 in a sunlight, in a dim light? How is it? Wow, <laughs> this screen is amazing. I have not seen better screen like this. And I honestly have difficulty moving back towards these old style negative LCD screens like look next to each other. And this is the best negative LCD screen out of all negative LCD screens. This is the best in my opinion from my personal experience. And now look at this one. It, it destroys this one. It just next level it i i have very difficult time moving back to these negative lcd screens now this watch has ruined me this screen i just can't wait for casio to start using these screens in smaller watches in in square g-shocks and something like that i just can't wait for that once they're gonna release a watch the size of this one with this screen the internet is gonna break i'm telling you okay that's it now let's put it into my tier list, thomaswatchreviews.com And this is very difficult for me. I was debating with myself several days and I just don't know. I was asking my wife and she said, what? Just put it into the nope tier. She touched this watch just like squeaks and rattles and she was like, how much is it? Currently it goes for 140 euros and she was like, what for this 140 euros what just put it into nope tier i was also thinking about nope tier because of this buckle because this menu feels menu and functionality and app on the phone it feels like 10 years behind and the quality of these hard plastics i mean the only good things for this watch is that if you like the design it is rather comfortable as well well it has 200 meters water resistance and it probably has pretty good durability i doubt if it has the same durability as all g-shocks but it still should be fairly durable watch you know after all i am putting it uh, it into not bad you see there are good things about this watch as well and if you look at this watch as a watch it's not really that bad it's not, it's not a bad watch after all. It has wonderful screen. It's very comfortable once you fix this buckle. So I can't put it into nope tier. So 
that's where it goes not bad i believe most of you aren't really watching right now <laughs> already turned off <laughs> so anyway for those of you who are still watching thank you have a wonderful day have a wonderful day i love you people you are wonderful people really so that's it goodbye